Hey everybody. Okay, so this is a late one. Um, if you're not able to finish, this is something that you can work on tomorrow because we're going to continue working on finding those common denominators and then um, putting it all together. All right. So we did, in every class, we did up to 12. Um, so if you didn't write that down, I'm going to try to. I am at home doing it from the house. Um, so here I have you had one third, and then it was two ninths. So just to show you that we were using another strategy to find the common denominator. And this one here, we actually did in class. I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out again. I'm going to make a rectangle and draw a line. This is going to be where I place my denominator. So I'm circling those. This is a three and a nine. This is like making a mini multiplication chart. Put a multiplication sign up here. The first column, I'm going to label it one. Second column is two. And the third column is three. Three times one is three. We're just skip counting, but if you wanted to see what that was like, three times two is six, three, six, and nine. So it's just skip counting. And then nine times one is nine. Well, you have to look in both of the denominator rows to see if you find a match. We're looking for the lowest common multiple, and we did find that, and it's nine, so that now becomes our lowest common denominator. So I'm going to take my one-third, and since I know that my common denominator will be nine, I went from three to nine by multiplying by three. Whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. And that is a 3. And so this now becomes 3 ninths. I'm going to keep this one the same because if you look here, it only took one jump. So I had to multiply that by 1. And my common denominator is 9. And this is just to represent why it stays the same. So on your homework paper, you just need to write the 3 ninths. and two nights. And that's it right there. All right, let's move over to the next one. All right, let's look at number four. And again, we're going to create the rectangle um, and then find the common denominator. And again, we did this all in class. So you should actually be on 12, but I'm going to go ahead and do number four, just in case you did not follow along, but we worked on this together. So I'm going to create, and again, my apologies, I'm at home doing this. I'm going to circle my denominators. It's 3 and 2. So this is 3, 2, and then multiply. I'm going to label this 1, label this 2, label this 3, and I'll just do this 4. And I forgot to draw my line now. Okay, so those are where my denominators go. Now I'm going to skip count by 3s. So it's one, 3 times 1 is 3, 6, 9, 12. And here it's 2 times 1 is 2, 4, 6. Well, I can stop right there because I find these two are my lowest multiples. So that's going to now be my lowest com uh, common denominator. So here I have 2 thirds equals, and then it's 6. So I went from 3 to 6 by multiplying by 2, 3 to 6 by multiplying by 2. And then whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So 2 times 2 is 4. So this is its equivalent fraction. And then I take the 1 half, and I know that my common denominator is 6. I go to my 2, 6, and I multiply it by 3. Whatever I do to my denominator, I must do to the numerator. And then it's 3, 6. So here the answer is going to be... 4, 6, and 3, 6. So those are the two fractions. Let's move over to number 6. That's kind of a little blurry, or can you see it? It's really hard to tell, so I hope that you're able to see it clearly. This is just the light and then the camera that's there on it. Okay, so it's 11, so I'm going to move over here. 
trying to get this done quickly. So you kind of get the gist of it, right? So what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and let you work on the other ones. This is 11 twelfths and 1 6, but I'm going to provide you with the answer so that you can check to make sure your work is okay. I'm going to go ahead. I'll just do my rectangle right here. I'm going to create my rectangle. I really don't have to do much on this one here. We showed you in class. I'm going to circle my denominators. Okay. Make sure it doesn't rattle too much. And then the 6. So this is the 12 and 6 in my multiplication. This is 1, 2, and 3. Well, I know that this is going to be greater than here, so I'm just going to put the 12 right here because 12 times 1 is 12. And then I'm going to skip count, and I'm going to see that it's going to, let's see how far I can get. So 6 times 1 is 6, and then 12. And here I can stop. And there's my common denominator. So this is going to stay the same. I'm going to bring down my 1, 6 equals, I know my denominator is 12. And then I ask myself, I went from 6 to 12 by doing what? Multiplying it by 2, whatever I do here. So this becomes 2, 6. So I'm leaving the 11 twelfths. And then this is 2 twelfths. So I went from 1, 6 to 2 twelfths. All right, and then let's move along to number 8. And number 8, I have 5 sevenths and 3 fifths. Go ahead and create my rectangle again. Oops, got offline there. Got offline because I started rushing. Draw my line, circle my denominators. The reason I want to circle it is so that I don't get misleading or miss off the track because remember today we had kids that were going to the numerator rather than the denominator. The one thing that we are changing is the denominator so that they're equivalent. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll go up to seven. If you're wanting to, you can also number down here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so that you can just match it here rather than going all the way up. So I'm going to skip count by seven. Seven times one is seven. Seven times two is 14. 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 5 is um, 35, 7 times 6 is 42. I'm going to stop right there. I can do this. I'll do 49. Okay, then 5 times, so you can do 5 times 1 or 5 times 1. That's up to you, whatever's going to be easiest. But knowing that you can do that, that's your option. And I'm skip counting by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, and then 35. Did I find a number, um, a match that's in the sevens denominator row and as well as the five denominator row? Yes, I did. It's 35 right here. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to have my five sevenths. That sure does look a little blurry. There we go, a little bit better. It's looking blurry. So I know that it's 35. So I'm going to go to my 7, go to the 35, and it took 5 jumps. So it's 5 groups, 5, so times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Going to this next one, 3 fifths. I'm going to bring it down here so it doesn't get in the way. I know that the denominator is 35. I go here to 35 and it was multiplied by seven. So it makes it kind of easier rather than having to go all the way up, but that's up to you. So you can number it down here as well. And make sure the numbers are um, the same, that they're related to each other. So we have five, 35, it's seven, or you can do the five, 35 to seven up here. So now I'm gonna multiply this by seven and then it's 21. So I'm gonna be writing down 25 over 35, and I have 21 
over 35. And those are the equivalent fractions. There you go. Sorry about that. All right, let's go to the next one. Number 10. And this is going to be two-fifths and three-fourths. It is fairly late, but I'm going to go ahead and post this anyway. So when you get in the classroom tomorrow, you can at least work on it or come by the classroom and work on it if you have any questions. Three-fifths and three-fourths. All right. I'm going to go ahead and draw my rectangle again. And again, this is another way of finding the common denominator. We've already gone through pattern blocks, area models, fraction strips, and now um, multiplication. Multiplication sign here. I'm going to circle 5 and 4, 5, 4, and now I'm going to number 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. I'll just do that. So I'm going to skip count by five, starting with five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. And then I'm going to skip count by fours. Again, if you're wanting to number the bottom, you can do that just so that you can see it. So this is four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. Do I have a match? Yes, I see my twenty right here, and I see my twenty right there. So with the two-fifths, I know that that's equal to the 20. So 5 times 4 equals 20. And I'll multiply the same, so that's 8. So it's 8 twentieths. The other one is 3 fourths. I already said my common denominator is 20. So I go to the 4, 20, and I multiply that by 5. Now I have 3 times 5 equals 15 and now I have my two equivalent fractions with the same denominator so for number 10 I have 8 over 20 and then the other one is 15 over 20 okay and that's what that is all right let's look at this next one let me go ahead and put my paper down here. It's 7 eighths, so this is number 12. I have 7 eighths and 1 half. And you should start seeing the patterns now, finding the multiples, right? So what do you think the common denominator will be before you even work on it? Okay, so write that to the side then and see if it comes out to what you say it is. I'm going to draw this here, multiplication sign. I'm going to circle my denominators. This is 8. This is 2. 1, 2. Can you start seeing it? 3, 4. I'll stop right there. 8 times 1 is 8. I'm going to stop here at the 8 because it's 2, and I know that um, I can multiply something uh, by 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. This is 4. 6, 8, and there's my common denominator. So if you said it was 8, you're absolutely right. So I'm keeping the 7 eighths. The 1 half is equal to 8 with the common denominator. I got to it by 2. I went from 2 to 8 by multiplying it by 4. And this becomes 4 eighths. So here I have 7 eighths and four eighths. The whole goal about all these strategies is that you're understanding how to find the common denominator. So no matter which ones you do, whatever you're picking out, or now you can start to, as you're practicing more, formulate your own, finding a way to, to get this done. Um, and that's, that's okay, because it's just your way of finding it. Except for don't look at like really big shortcuts, because it's still understanding the process. All right, um, oops, I just turned my light off. Okay, so let's look at this one here. We're needing to find the unknown number for each little square. So the, the least common denominator is going to be what here? So if I have 6, 3 times what will be 6? See, it looks really blurry, doesn't it? 
So that's right. If I multiply this by two, it's going to be six. So my least, my least common denominator, my LCD is going to be six. Okay. Let's look at this other one. Now this is going to have multiple ones because if my denominator is 24 and then it's eight, I can do three because it would be a three times eight would be 24. I can do a six. This could be a six and multiplying that out six times four would be 24, right? And then what else? I can, this could be a 12 because 12 times two equals 24. And it also can be a 24 because 24 times one equals 24. So my common denominator was 24 and I could have had this one as a three and I would multiply that by eight. I could have this, I would multiply that by four, etc. All right, so let's look at this next one. I have a one over something and two sevenths. The least common denominator is 21. Well, it's either going to be a three because it's a three times seven is 21 or just 21, one over 21. Um, and that's my common least common denominator. And that's it there. All right, so now let's flip the page over. Sorry about this, I'm trying to, okay. So how can you find the least common denominator for one eighth and two ninths? And so what would you do when you're finding that? So for number 18, remember that you were going to be multiplying you multiply your eight and your nine. So you're finding your least common. So when we're working out your table, you're multiplying those out, the eights and the nines to find that sum that's gonna be A. Number 20, which fraction um, use the least, which fractions use the least common denominator and are equivalent to three tenths and one sixth? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move that over here. And on my screen, it sure does look blurry. So I really hope you guys can see it. It's not a very good quality video this evening, so I apologize. I have three tenths. And I have one sixth. I'm going to go ahead and create eight. Circle my denominators. This is ten. Draw my the middle line and six. My multiplication, one box, two, three, four, five, six, and um, I'll just do seven. Let's see where we're at. So here I have one times ten, so I'm going to skip count by ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, and seventy. Okay, I'll stop right there. That's good. Now I have six. I'm going to skip count by sixes or multiply. Six times one is six. Twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, and thirty. Do I have a common denominator? Yes, I do. It's thirty. So for my three-tenths, it equals to my common denominator is thirty. How did I get from ten to thirty? I multiplied by three. 10 to 30, I multiplied by 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. And then for my 1 6, how did I get from, I'm going to put my 30 over here. How do I get from 6 to 30? I multiply by 5, and it's 5 thirtieths. So looking over here for number 20, the answer is D. I have to go to a different type of screen. The 5 thirtieths and 9 thirtieths. This multi-step problem, we're looking at the archaeologist that marks off two equal size um, sites of evacuation, of excavation. <laughs> she uses a grid uh, system to divide each square into its sections, and one square has eight sections, and the other one, and I'm just going to be using my skip counting here for number 22. So one is eight sections, 
and the other one is six sections. She plans to divide both squares into more sections so that they have the same number of equal size sections. So how many sections will be squared off? I'm going to go ahead and create my grid again, my rectangle, and make it two rows, circle my denominators, eight and six, and I'm going to start my skip counting, one, two, three, four. I'm going to just stop there. 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32. Guys, this is also a great way of learning and sharpening your skills on multiplication. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24. Did we find a common denominator? Yes, we did. So there we go. So each square is going to have 24 squares. The answer is C. And there you go. That's it for this evening. You guys have a great evening, and I apologize for being so late. Um, crazy, crazy, too many things to do at one time. But y'all have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Be ready, be active, and don't stop learning. See you later. Bye.